Well, good afternoon and welcome back. Of course, as I said a little bit earlier before the break, we are chatting just about that VAT panel, of course, releasing um, a, an introduction and adding a few more items to what should be a zero-rated VAT list for South Africa as well. Tabi Lioko is a VAT panel contributor and an economist, was part of that panel to really unpack just exactly what South Africa could uh, really look at with regards to what is zero-rated for them and perhaps help out to the poor in that regard as well. So we'll chat to Tabi. Tabi, thank you so much for your time. It's I suppose let's, let's unwrap the thinking around exactly the items that you put on there, everything from sanitary items uh, right through to bread, flour as well as on there. The thinking around why you brought those items in particular into, into this list. So um, our task was to make sure that we uh, mitigate the impact of the VAT increase that we saw in the 1st of April sure. um, for the poor. And even though many South Africans think that it was to alleviate increases in prices for everyone, it was really targeted at the poor and vulnerable in society. So we chose um, those six items based on the Living um, Condition Survey produced by StatsSA. So it looks at household expenditure. And out of everything, all that, that intensive list of um, household expenditure, um, we decided to go for the six and recommend that the six should be zero rate. And even though we had, you know, questions on a few other items um, on uh, within the six, sure. I think two of them um, we didn't know how it's going to be zero rated, but we said that extensive work needs to be done uh, by the national treasury. Yeah. Do you believe that it, it's it's a sufficient enough list then to help the poor in that essence? Because you said the main aim was to help the poor. Do you think that those six items in themselves are sufficient? Uh, with regards to, to, to where it stands? I think in terms of zero rating, they are sufficient. Remember that zero rating actually almost always benefits uh, the rich. Yeah. And that's because of their ability to spend. And so if you're zero rating, if you look at, for instance, the last uh, list, 19 items, mainly fruits and vegetables, um, the poor consume less than five, on average, five vegetables and five fruits, whereas the rich would have broccoli, cauliflower, yeah. and all those fancy vegetables that the poor don't consume. So when you're zero rating fruits and vegetables, those who consume the most fruits and vegetables are going to benefit from zero rating. Um, so we, we did look at the products that the poor would firstly use and also would benefit from zero rating. Mm. There's one item on the list that actually didn't, um, shouldn't have been zero rating or recommended for zero rating using our methodology, and that is sanitary towels. Um, so sanitary towels, because... The Living Conditions um, Survey looks at expenditure. And if the poor are not spending money on sanitary towels, mm. which is actually a little bit weird because every woman between the ages of 12 and let's just say 55 uses sanitary towels. Yeah. And yet um, the consumption of sanitary towels was actually very uh, weak. So, so which also shows that, fit, yeah. exactly, which also shows that only the rich could actually be, uh, um, afford sanitary towels versus the poor. So what we decided in our uh, deliberations is that um, there's no other products that men use uh, that is natural and um, that is taxed. Sure. Whereas women have to use sanitary towels. So we decided, fine, we, this is a grudge tax, and we're going to make sure that sanitary towels are not taxed. But at the same time, or uh, there's no VAT on sanitary towels, but at the same time, again, it's about affordability. Mm. And uh, the, putting a zero rating sanitary towels doesn't help the poor. So we did recommend further that the government provide sanitary towels to the poor for free so that it will help them, you know, with the yeah. usage of, of sanitary towels. I towels. suppose that is the context in which now we need to work with and perhaps speak to government to say, will they indeed be working very hard to, to get that done? Um, Things like school uniform as well added to this, nappies, including cloth and adult nappies as well, white bread, as I said, bread flour and cake flour as well are uh, part of that list. One might ask why it wasn't perhaps part of your mandate to question the one percentage point uh, increase in that holistically from the start. Was that part of what you had to do here? And if not, um, was that something that you guys discussed at all? 
So, no, it wasn't um, our task to look at or to question whether it was suitable for the Treasury to increase uh, VAT. Um, you know, as an economist, I know that the country is in debt. We have a f f 48 billion um, uh, budget deficit yeah. and we needed to raise money. And so raising, increasing uh, VAT raised about 22 billion of the 36 that the country needed. So it was a substantial amount of money that contributed towards the money that needed to be raised. Um, we know we were also aware of the risk of a downgrade. Mm. And I guess Treasury also weighed whether the impact of a downgrade versus an impact of the uh, one percentage point increase, which one would we prefer? And I think that they went for the right one because a downgrade, as you know, it takes countries several years to recover from that. Sure. So it wasn't within our mandate, but what wasn't within our mandate is to find a solution to, to support the very vulnerable. Already in the uh, budget, uh, social grants were increased slightly so that they can uh, support those who are recipients of social grants. But we also know that there are those who are, um, you know, the unemployed, discouraged workers, sure. those who are the working poor, and those are not catered for by the social grants. So we had yeah. to include them as well. Very quickly, anything else from here? Is your job done? It is to an extent. So we do have a parliament uh, process that we need to go through. I think it's the end of August, but also it coincides with after the submission. So the public are invited to submit uh, that submissions at uh, treasury.co.za yeah. and so they can make their comments on the six items and the report. Yeah, fantastic. Tabi, really appreciate your time. That's Tabi Lioka, uh, an economist, but also a contributor to the VAT panel, which, of course, released its report just last week as well. That is a look at your markets, a look at some news as well, making headlines, which continues to help the South African economy.